Okay, so here we are in the PTS, and I'm going to bring you a Alpha Bridge four-piece build, um, pretty much showcasing what I believe to be one of the competitive metagame builds, one of the many, by the way, I think there's going to be a lot of them, uh, competitive gear set meta build you know, games moving forward after the patch hits. I think the Alpha Bridge is a pretty stable set. I don't think they're going to change this drastically. I think if anything, they're going to hit the ones that are functioning you know, to a heightened efficiency right now. They might hit Firecrest or something like that. There may be changes to gear sets, but I don't believe the Alpha Bridge will be among them. So I've put together this build. Uh, it's going to be in the patch 1.4 builds playlist. I'll be expanding on that tremendously all the way through the PTS, especially in the third week. But right now I've gotten the pieces to put this together. So I wanted to showcase it uh, and talk a little bit about the mechanics that I've come to understand more over the course of playing for the past few days. So I'm going to talk about four piece alpha bridge, why I have these two high ends, the two guns that I have, my skills, my talents, etc. And then I'll throw it to some live gameplay of me in the dark zone solo playing. So you can see that it works, it performs, uh, you can farm solo pretty much anywhere in the world on any content level as long as you have you know the skill to do so. The only thing holding this build back is player skill and that's why, that's why it's not you know perfect because in my hands, it's my only my second day or third day actually on PC gaming on the division. So. I definitely don't have the, the hand-eye coordination on the mouse yet to, to maximize the efficiency of this, but some players definitely will, and they'll have you know greater yield when it comes to using this. So starting off with the chess piece, uh, you're going to want to roll armor. Armor is now kind of a different stat point. Uh, the way I believe armor to function is a, it's a pairing with stamina to create toughness, but it's no longer something that functions independently of stamina, where you just max it out at 75%. Um, secondly, the way the armor works now is there's two different armor like levels. So in the, the persistent world, in the normal regular PvE content, you have a certain you know armor percentage of mitigation. And as you can see, if I scroll down here, and I'll show you when I go in the dark zone why it's different, um, to survivability, I have 53.36 and I have 10,200 armor. Now, I've achieved 60% mitigation before with different builds while on about 9,000 to, to 9,800 armor. Uh, and I believe that the amount of armor it takes to reach armor cap changes with the amount of stamina that you have. Now, I haven't confirmed that. This is all speculation right now. I haven't had the time that I would like to just run numbers constantly because I've been migrating to Twitch and there's been a lot going on. Um, but I will get to that. That's just my assumption right now. That's how I'm, you know, moving forward and building my builds around that theory craft. So... Uh, that's what I've done. And I think it's very important to roll armor on your chest piece because you do want as much mitigation as possible. It's already been proven that after 50% or even before, like every percentage of mitigation helps a lot more than just having a little bit of health. That being said, health is now a significantly better attribute to have on chest pieces. With the prevalence of exotic damage resilience, there's nothing else that you want to roll. And 5,000 health is actually a significant amount. And in my character sheet, you can see I have 153,000 health in total. That's extremely tanky. Uh, I am primarily a tanky build here. As you can see, my toughness will go down when I go into the dark zone and the other armor scaling kicks in. However, uh, my base health pool is very important and I'm fairly, fairly tanky. Don't apply these stat points to 1.3, guys. I've got a lot of comments saying, oh, your toughness is crap or all oh, your DPS is crap. The game scales completely differently. Anybody that's playing 1.3 has absolutely no idea what's going on right now until Monday when they get in here and get their hands on it. But this skill power is actually sort of good, fairly competitive. I would prefer it to be higher. Uh, the toughness is good. It's right on point. I'm fairly tanky. And then the DPS is okay. It's not the best, but, you know... The interesting thing about these guns is the high base damage. I'll talk about that later. And then all the different talents because of Alpha Bridge. So I actually have competitive DPS as well. Uh, so on your chest piece, I would cons I would consider rolling those. Uh, but you can roll really anything that you want because there's versatility now. And it's a stamina chess piece with the other smaller portions of attributes. Now, the mods in my chest piece have significantly more firearms than they used to. Um, and as you can see, EDR is on both of them. So that's another chunk of exotic damage resilience. It's very prevalent. You don't need to prioritize it on gear. You can get it on mods or you can get it on some gear pieces. Um, it's much easier to find, uh, to find out. So moving on to my mask, I have Alpha Bridge mask. Health on kill is important, guys. With the decreased time to kill on enemy NPCs, you can be proccing health on kill basically whenever you feel like it uh, in any content that you feel like, as long as you're getting the killing blow. So getting a significant portion of health on kill will allow you to progress through solo content faster and easier as long as you have your timing down. So I would definitely advise people to get that on their mask. The critical hit chance you don't really need because people aren't going to go crit builds anymore, I don't think. Uh, the critical hit damage in general receives such a huge nerf that it's not going to be front and center anymore. It definitely can be done. I haven't done it successfully yet, but it's definitely a possibility. And I would advise going for health on kill, but you can go for critical hit chance if you want. Again, versatility. 
Moving on to Alpha Bridge knee pads, what I've chosen to go for is armor. Uh, brings that, that base armor up quite a bit. As you can see, large amounts of main stat attribute and then two smaller chunks of the secondary. Increased kill XP is nice, the resistances are nice, but they're not critical to the build. And then, uh, you know, the mods are rolling much higher. Now, the four pieces of gear, or the three pieces of gear, I should say, that have performance mod slots are your backpack, your pads, and your holster. There's two in the backpack, one in the holster, one in the pads. And you want four performance mods that augment your chosen skills. I would urge people to go for first aid self heal or first aid ally heal if they're going for a support role or if they're going for a pure DPS support role for buffing, I would say go for a pulse critical hit chance or critical hit damage um, or something like that. It's considering smart cover now no longer has offensive capabilities other than just stability of your gun. It's mostly a defensive skill. So moving on to my holster, you're gonna want armor on your holster unless you're going for like a pistol build or something like that, which is definitely gonna be possible in this this new patch when it, when it comes forward. Um, but I'm going for armor to max out, get as high mitigation as possible because I will be trying to do some player killing. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, PvP for you in this video because, or I'm, I might have some PvP later on actually, but I doubt it. There's not very many of us on this server. This is early access and there's really not many people. So moving on to my gloves, Savage gloves are extremely good in 1.4 extremely good um now that they've taken away a lot of the ways to get critical strike chance and there will be no more legacy guns guys all your smgs with critical strike chance from before 1.3 will no longer work i believe that they're retroactively disabling those or changing them um, which is good i think that i think that everyone should have balanced gear for anyone that started the the game recently they should not be at a disadvantage because they weren't playing earlier and have this you know discontinued legacy item so Savage is extremely, extremely important. Health on kill, again, you want as much of that as possible. I believe I'm up around 30, 40%. Assault rifle damage, I would prefer to be LMG damage for this particular build because I'm using two LMGs, but assault rifle damage works. And critical hit chance, again, it, it's really nice, but you know, critical hit damage, critical hit chance. There's not a huge amount of reliance on crits anymore, at least from my end, uh, unless you get specific talents on your guns, unless you get specific rolls on your gear, and then you might be able to get close to meeting crit cap. But it's not something like 1.3 where everyone's rolling around at crit cap. If you want to get to the critical you know, hit chance cap, you can do that, but you really need to specialize into that role. And I think that that's fantastic. And now the backpack. This is actually one of my favorite things that they've changed so far. Specialize now adds 200% of firearms and stamina to skill power. Now I would highly urge anyone that's trying to be competitive to run some high ends in your build. I would not, you know, recommend running six gear set pieces. I would recommend running four gear set pieces or three or whatever, and then some high ends because they can actually roll extremely high competitively in, in the, you know, the main stat, you know, rolls. And then armor, that works really well. But also the talents are really nice. And 200% of firearms and stamina to skill power. I can show you right here. This Firecrest Micro Shuttle Pack has uh, firearms as the main stat. It's not electronics, so it's got the same amount of electronics. And it does not have skill power as the major attribute role. So switching from the specialized backpack to the Firecrest backpack shows a decrease of almost 10,000 skill power. That's because 5,000 added to 4,500 is nearly 10,000. So 200% of 9,500 is almost 20,000. Now that's almost 20,000 skill power, which is more than, which is about double what you can get as a major attribute from, you know, your holster's role intrinsically, and then add it on just because of a talent. I think the specialized backpack is amazing. It helps your heals. It helps your, your alternative skills. It's really good. And the high ends are competitive. That's why I've chosen to run this specialized backpack in this build. I would also run something like Vigorous or Reckless and then an Alpha Bridge backpack if I could, but you know, I'm still working towards acquiring those pieces. Talking about my weapons, I have uh, the M60 and the L86. Now, there was a data dump very recently that skill up covered really, really well. So check that video out if you want to see all the different, you know, specific points of the, the buffs and the nerfs and the percentage changes and all the different numerical values that are associated with this uh, PTS in this patch so far. But I know for a fact that the M60 just off the top of my head was hitting significantly harder than it ever used to. So 18.3 thousand base damage versus 15.5. Uh, versus, let's see, I have another L86 here, versus 15.8, versus 16.3. So the M60, the belt-fed machine guns, I believe it was a, a buff of 30% base damage, somewhere around there, and they're extremely good in the base damage category. So when you do get a crit, it's going to scale super high, and uh, you're not really going to rely on crits, but you can still do competitive base damage, even though the RPM is low. The mag size is fantastic. You can hip fire it. It's a little bit of a spray and pray, uh, but it works pretty well. And then for the talents that I'm running, Accurate, Deadly, Fierce. Now, Deadly I isn't as good. It received a big, big nerf. Uh, I'm actually hesitant to call it a nerf. It got rebalanced to a lower 
you know, stat point. It's 15% now. And then Fierce is actually really good. Uh, this is one of the gun talents that's going to get into the spotlight more because critical hit chance is so difficult to acquire now. Brutal, again, took a hit. It's, it's a little bit different now. It's a lot less, uh, but it's still good. And then Vicious, I really like Vicious. Some people used to disagree with me that Vicious was good. I think now, more than ever, Vicious is going to step again, just like Fierce, into the spotlight because stacking all these different critical strike chance modifiers on talents, on gear, uh, will be one of the only ways to meet crit cap, and that's going to be really, really cool when someone can pull that off with an SMG. Uh, competent, really great to have percent weapon damage bonuses, especially on top of something as high as 18.3. So if you can get responsive instead of accurate or something like that, because LMGs don't really need accurate or responsive instead of uh, deadly, that's going to be a lot, lot better. So moving on to the mods on the LMGs, they're a little bit different now. Magazine size, uh, critical hit chance, and rate of fire. There's three attributes now with one single main attribute and then two smaller, you know, tiny little bonus attributes. I went for magazine size because I just don't have one that's better, but I would definitely go for RPM. That would be my main point. If you can get weapon damage, that too. But mag size is already taken care of by that base 100 by most of the belt-fed machine guns, so I would go for RPM. Uh, for the underbarrel, for the muzzle, it's all really whatever you want to get, but critical hit chances is another way to get some of it, a little chunk of it, 7%, give or take. Um, you know, some stability is nice, headshot damage is nice, critical hit chance, again, 2.5%. Um, you can stack up and get a good a good amount of critical hit damage. You know, you can swap that out for critical hit chance. Uh, and you can mix and match a whole bunch of smaller attributes on your, your weapon mods to achieve a, a greater role in your team. So you can stack up all accuracy and stability, have a very have a laser beam gun. You can stack up all critical hit chance and all critical hit damage and deal a lot more damage, but your gun's going to bounce all over the place. So you are now you now have to specialize, and I really, really like that. So moving on to my skills, I am using Pulse for critical hit chance and critical hit damage. I, I am trying to, to at least get some critical strikes, but it's not something I'm going to rely on heavily. I could very easily switch to something like the Flame Turret. Now this right here, the Dragon Breath Turret, got a huge buff. So what's going to happen now is it has a lot more health, 200,000. This is a huge buff, and it does a lot more damage, and it has a lot longer range, and it's really just an aggro-soaking mechanic. You drop that turret down, the enemies prioritize that, you're freed up to fight them, and there's a lot of ways that this is really going to help you clear PvE content, and a lot of ways where this is going to be competitive in PvP now. This is one of the only ways to light people on fire. Incendiary bullets no longer do that, to my knowledge, and when you put this turret down, it has a long range, you can zone people away from certain objectives, um, and it takes them a long time to kill your turret and to get close enough to hit that turret reliably means that they're going to probably get lit on fire during the time when they're killing it since they can't just burst it down like they used to. So this is a really, really good bet when you're solo playing or even when you're PVPing. Uh, and there's actually the Firecrest gear set, which augments this very nicely. And I'm going to be showcasing that later on because there's a lot of content to cover. Sorry if the video is a little bit lengthy. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm passionate about the content. There's so much in the PTS right now that I want to cover that I just, you know, I think I'll be uh, do a good job of covering for you guys, and I just really want to, you know, be thorough and detailed. Now the heal works differently. You cannot multi-proc triage, or you can, and you can also not weave in and out and multi-proc the actual healing effect on yourself. And it will no longer double proc when you pop it for yourself. You know, you puff heal. It will no longer zoom in twice and double proc. So healing is something you have to be much more careful with. And I'll show you that in the gameplay in a second. I would advise running booster shot if you can while using a vigorous chest piece. But again, I haven't gotten the roll for that. So I'll demonstrate that at a later time. Now, uh, one more thing that people probably want to see is my character sheet. Moving down, I'm just going to scroll through really quickly. And you guys can uh, pause to see any individual attribute that you want to see. And... We're good there. And then I'm also going to show you my talents because on the move is amazing now. With the decreased time to kill, on the move is fantastic. And I would advise everyone to be running that on Monday when they get into the PTS to test it out. And I would also think that they're not really going to change that. This isn't slated to be changed to my knowledge. So it's something that's going to be extremely powerful to run. Uh, I am running Pulse, so I don't think I really need to use Precision. And I can actually swap that out for something else like Adrenaline. Since I want to be remaining at... Uh, let's see, let's swap this out for precision. I want to remain at full health or in my overheal at all times to proc Vicious because 10% critical strike chance is really powerful now in 1.4. So this is the talent setup that I'm running. Adrenaline is another way to do that. Strike back since people no longer have 100% uptime on skills. It's not happening. Uh, skills oftentimes won't even start their cooldown period until after they've been destroyed uh, for certain placeable skills. So you definitely need something to reduce cooldowns. Triage can't multi-proc, but in a team it's still good because you can achieve 45% if everyone runs into it. So it's still a good talent, but it's no longer batshit broken like it used to be. 
So that's my talents. Uh, I'm actually going to go out there and show you just a little bit of solo play of me killing some NPCs and how the build performs. The LMGs have very, very good base damage. Uh, that's what I'm going to be relying on. And when I do get crits, it's going to scale really well. And one of the things that people are going to be <laughs> worried about, and I know that a lot of people are kind of wary of at the moment, is the fact that uh, Sentry no longer marks to 45%, it actually marks to 15%, and the headshot damage is no longer multiplicative, and M1A's got a nerf. So everything about how we used to complete PvE content has changed, okay? So it, it's all different. Now, I can show you, these are red enemies, uh, level 33 red enemies, that are in the dark zone, because these are trash mobs, and they're intended to be so. And that's fantastic. I'm really happy about that. I think that these being trash mobs is the right decision. Now, when you get to a landmark, you'll see, you know, the elite level 33s, which are maxed out end game mobs. Um, there's a couple different mechanics that'll happen with those. If you light the, the flamethrower tank of a 33 elite uh, flamethrower on fire, he will then bum rush you. He'll charge you. He'll, he'll run at you with increased movement speed and attempt to like tackle onto you and kill you. Now, that's pretty cool. I think that that's a good mechanic for some of the hardest enemies in the game. But also, as you can see here, I am taking damage, but it's I'm survivable. I'm not going to die right off the bat. Uh, I can I can tank some damage. I can do competitive damage from range, and the health on kill. This is where it really comes comes in handy because you know after I'm done reloading, I have good magazine size. Uh, you definitely have to dodge out of the way of those because grenades are actually quite quite deadly. But as you can see, when I kill him, I get a chunk of health back, and every time I'm killing an enemy, I'm getting a chunk of health. And up at like 30-40%, that's really valuable. And that will allow you to clear these landmarks by yourself. Uh, as you can see, the heal comes back fairly efficiently. It's Again, it's not 100% uptime. You're not going to be having the, these ultimate triage spamming teams that can just heal forever and ever. Uh, you're going to have to time your heal correctly because if you don't, you will be punished for it. But uh, when when you need to, the heal now procs instantly. You're not going to have it you know, puff out and die in your heal like was very frustrating for some players and would happen quite frequently. Um, but what is going to happen is you can be killed through it, and you're not going to have it all the time. So you can't, again, you can't spam. Um, but it will proc instantly, boost you up. I really like the patch. <laughs> Anyone that's kind of complaining before getting their hands on it, which has happened actually quite a bit in my community, um, I really don't respect that. I don't think you should be complaining before you've played it, because the patch is fantastic. It's It really does change the feel of the game completely. And it makes it competitive for solo play. It makes it fun for solo play. It opens up the door for a shit ton of different builds. And pardon my language, but it really, really does. It opens up the door for just a wealth of builds. You can do pretty much anything that you want. You can specialize in anything that you want. Um, it's just a really fun time. And I think that's going to bring a lot of players back to the game. So as you can see here, I can suppress. Uh, LMGs have a heightened suppression rate. So it's a really good PvE gun, like significantly good. Uh, because they will suppress targets easier. You get more drops. I'm sure they'll change the drop rate here because having two items and oftentimes two gear set pieces from a boss is a little bit too much. But I think that's just so that we can gear up in the PTS and test all the different builds. Um, but that was me soloing the refueling station right here with pretty much maxed out gear uh, by myself in the dark zone at the highest world tier bracket of four. So that's not something I could previously do. Maybe I could if I was cheesing it with a shotgun and used like my damage signature. I didn't use a signature that whole time. Um, if I had a team, it would have gone much faster. Uh, I was using really, really fun health on kill mechanics. So as you can see, going down to survive to combat, actually. Where is it? I'm new to PC. There we go. Um, health on kill is 26%. I, I'm used to that being about 36 to 40%. So one more piece having about 14%. Um, which is really, really nice, but even 26% helps tremendously every time you kill one, you're getting some health back. So this is my double LMG patch 1.4 alpha bridge setup using uh, Savage and Specialized. I will have a lot more builds coming in the future. I really, really enjoy this patch, and there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can swap out to assault rifles whenever you want. Assault rifles are also extremely good now. Uh, extremely, extremely good. I got a Predator's Mark assault rifle build coming very soon. I got the Firecrest Showcase coming up. Uh, so if you want to check those out, stay tuned for that content. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Check out the links below if you want to support the channel. And as always, have a nice day.